George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're continuing our coverage of Dell Storage Forum 2012 in Boston, Massachusetts. Joining me today is Tibor Pazera, Storage Administrator from Advantage Sales and Marketing. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Now, as I understand it, um, you guys are a current Compellent customer. Yes, we are. And been using it for about two years? Yes, two years. Two years. So I guess about two years ago, you um, will take us take us through that process because that that's a, a good period of time. Obviously, you had something before then, and you sort of transitioned to a compellent. So what uh, what led you to making that move? Um, about a little over two years ago, um, we were still using our previous platform, and um, we were experiencing let's say additional latency uh, throughput, and I/O was not exactly where we. Uh, needed it to be, um, and we were having some growing pains. Uh, so the project was tasked to me to basically figure out what would be our next storage platform. So I spent about six months talking to just about every vendor out there uh, to see, you know, what uh, platforms are available. Um, and after careful selection, a lot of benchmarking, uh, we flew to just about uh, every office. <laughs> Uh, demoed a lot of systems, had some system installed uh, temporarily in our data center to test uh, further with uh, some of our uh, software packages. Um, we ended up uh, going with Compellent. Okay. What what were some of the applications that were uh, driving the I.O. And, and, and pushing you to the limits there? Um, we have a lot of databases. Um, most of our, um, we're mostly Microsoft uh, shops, so mm -hmm. most, most of it was uh, Microsoft SQL. Uh, we have at least um, 12 to 15 different SQL applications, um, and a lot of them uh, drive a significant I.O. Uh, at the same time, our exchange infrastructure was running on our previous Santa platform uh, that was running a little bit on the slow side. And um, also, we're a large uh, VMware environment. So at the time, we were probably about 60% virtualized. At this time, we're almost about 80% virtualized. Wow. So we were looking at a platform that would scale well with our virtualization efforts. So on the virtualization side, you're kind of hitting the classic uh, I.O. blender uh, problem that we talk about? Correct. The more hosts you have, the more I.O. you generate. And then obviously, um, as the, your little private cloud is growing, um, you know, you need to have a system that can scale out. Sure. And then on the SQL side, was it... Um, uh, was it uh, sort of random I.O., just uh, uh, a lot of updates or, or searching? What was causing the bottleneck um, there? The, the problem is since we are running um, a lot of different SQL platforms, um, the load is varied. So that was the issue with our previous platform. Uh, it was hard to, um, we could build it for sequential or large block I.O.s, or we could build it for a lot of small block. But... As we started throwing all these loads together into the blender, mm -hmm. um, we started seeing um, issues um, and not being able to aggregate every single drive in the pool um, in order to, um, you know, drive, you know, the I/O load. So it could do one or two things well; it just couldn't cover the whole workload. Exactly, and mm -hmm. we ended up splitting our loads and basically assigning um, pools of drives to specific tasks. And in the end, since we weren't leveraging all the drives that were available to us, mm -hmm. it was not you know a solution that was going to work long term. So as you kind of went down your selection criteria, I mean, six months of worth of research, we probably could have hired you at that point. Uh, what what was the uh, what were some of the key criteria that you were looking for in this process? Uh, number one criteria was flexibility. Uh, our, since, um, let me explain, we have a three-year life cycle in all our hardware, mm -hmm. so we have a lot of moving pieces always in our environment. Mm -hmm. Every three years, um, we um, lease ends and we basically replace all our servers, um, switches, anything that basically is a hardware piece in our environment, including the SAN platform. Um, so... Since basically every week or every other day we have new servers coming in and old servers being out, you know, there's a lot of migrations, a lot of data is being move, uh, moving. So we need a system that you know, lets you move the data in every possible way. Um, and I'll give you another example. Um, we also add a lot of drives uh, with our old system. Uh, we have two data centers. Uh, they're about 300 miles apart. We have a giggling between them. And... Uh, we borrowed some drives from one location to the other because we were running low in disk space um, in 
one data center versus the other data center was slightly less utilized. Or well, adding the drives were easy. Trying to remove the drives back and send them back to the data center was a six month process. Right. Versus with Compella, it's very easy to um, you know add capacity. And if you have the need to, let's say, remove a shelf, um, you know it is very easily uh, evacuated and um, unplugged from the system without needing to destroy any data sets or destroy any aggregates or any other pieces that you've created. Great. Okay. So from a um, so you went through the selection process. Uh, what really stuck out? I mean, I, I'm assuming flexibility was a big one, right? Uh, but what stuck out in the compellent world for you? Uh, the first feature um, back then, it was new uh, data progression. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to leverage multiple tier of drives without having to spend a ton of money on the highest performance drives. Right. Um, we are a tapeless environment, so all of our backups end up on the SAN. And mm -hmm. obviously, it's just very <laughs> inefficient to store all sure. those backups on very expensive drives. Um, but on top of it, you know, sometimes your regular data that is less access than not only backups um, would be nice to be able to leverage some of the slower drives that are larger capacity. But if the need arises, the data can be brought up, you know, to a higher tier of disk. Sure. Uh, the other thing is, um, especially with the tiering, the use of SSDs. You know, SSDs, especially uh, two years ago, you know, they were super pricey. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, cost per IOP was staggering. But, you know, the boosts to performance, you know, they were quite big as well. So it was important to be able to leverage the technology without breaking the bank. Right, sure. And with the, with the uh, compellent um, data progression cycle, you can... The way our systems are currently configured is we try to capture all the daily writes uh, to SSDs. Mm -hmm. So we have about 16 um, drives per um, set of controllers of SSDs, about two terabytes worth of capacity. And that allows us to capture basically as the um, daily cycle of data comes in, we capture all of it to SSD. Then at night, it gets progressed to a slower uh, tiers of disk. So any reads for the next day can come in from our 15K pool. But all that uh, performance for writes is available um, on a daily uh, basis, especially for some of our um, SQL databases that okay. um, don't really have any long-term data. It's all transient data. Uh, okay. so di data mining, they inject the data into the tables, process it, it gets purged the next day. So being able to just leverage the highest performing tier without, you know, um, having to go down to the lower tier uh, boost performance uh, tremendously. Now, the other thing I, I recall is that uh, availability was uh, important to you guys. Uh, so talk, can you talk a little bit about the compelling availability features and what you like there? Um, obviously, you know, data needs to be available at all times, you know. Um, replicating the data, uh, preventing any sort of data loss in that regard. Uh, we're running basically an active, active uh, data center at this time. Um, we have four compellent arrays. All four are basically identical. Um, and all the data is basically cross-replicated at all times, or at least all the critical data. We have about um, set ourselves a 24-hour recovery period uh, that if you know a data center goes offline, we should be able to bring most of our applications online within 24 hours. Okay. Um, so the replication piece is nice. Um, the other feature that we use a lot, live volume, mm -hmm. uh, being able to um, move uh, data live from one system to another without the system being even aware of it. So if there's any maintenance issues or load balancing, uh, like we have, since we have two systems per data center, sometimes as well as you want to load up the data, it's never even. Sometimes sure. you start using more capacity in this system or more I O on this system. And with our previous environment, it got to the point where we had a lot of idle disks that were assigned to something. And it was like, wow, that's a lot of waste. But it took a lot of effort to move the data around to get it to a point where, OK, we can utilize this data again right. or utilize these drives again with live volume, we can say, yeah, the system's kind of running low on performance. You know, we can offload some of those applications um, on some of those data sets to another um, system that's sitting next to it without, you know, the application saying, hey, you know, right. <laughs> we're going down. All right. Well, I guess that really ties back right into that flexibility thing that you were looking Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Flexibility yeah. was key. Um, and not only flexibility, just uh, being able to visualize what is also happening on your SAN platform, mm -hmm. um, you know, the reporting capabilities and being able to pinpoint exactly, you know, um, where if 
there are any performance bottlenecks or you know what the response time is per individual component of the array. You know, you can look at the front end ports, back end ports, you can look at the, you know, utilization per individual controller. So that kind of visibility was new to us because with our old platform, we had to send some cryptic text commands to the array, the, they dumped the text file that we had to send to the engineering <laughs> department. And a week later, they told you, oh, by the way, you know, this is where your bottleneck is. Right. Yeah. You know, versus all of this is now um, done in house. You know, it's very rare that I have to call support and say, hey, what is happening in my array? Right. You know, it takes me five minutes in the morning to look at it and say, hey, yeah, this is, everything's running good. All my latencies, all my throughputs, all my IO, everything is, you know, the way it should be. And if it isn't, I can identify what is causing uh, the problem. That's fantastic. So the uh, just real quickly then, uh, as far as future plans with the compellent, is there, do you got anything uh, on the horizon that you're going to do with the system? Oh, well, one more year and all the hardware gets refreshed. Okay. Uh, so uh, we already went through a cycle once. So we already upgraded our controllers from Series 30 to Series 40. Mm -hmm. um, took us probably about an hour to perform our upgrade of controllers, which, you know, in our previous environment was never going to happen in that time frame. You know, it would, you would require professional services on a lot of downtime. Um, with the um, new stuff that's been um, on the horizon, so we just upgraded to the 64-bit code, but obviously we will continue with um, upgrading to technology as it presents itself. So I think in the next month or two, the new controllers are coming out, so right. we'll probably... Um, upgrade to the new um, Dell-based hardware um, that you know support um, more CPUs, more RAM, and more performance. Great, great. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, yet another satisfied, compelling customer uh, here at Dell Storage Forum 2012. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in.